Okay, I realized I went ahead and hit live stream and my lights are not plugged in so they could die at any moment. So this is what we're gonna do. The laptop is charged, so we can unplug the laptop. And let's see how much battery this one has. Okay, we got a significant amount of battery for this guy. Hi guys, welcome to the live stream. Mm, this one might die. Plugging you in. Hi guys, I'm plugging in my light. Hold on, give me a sec. There we go. Hey friends, welcome to my live. Man, you guys caught a good one. The energy is here. Um, got a lot of fun things to talk about. So this is an impromptu, impromptu, impromptu. Feels like I'm saying it wrong, but it's fine. I was originally supposed to do this live stream for Forex Tester. Note the uh, orange background, their logo's orange. And just do like a little review. Um, download the software, go through it with you guys, kind of show you guys the setup process, and just spend an hour just going through the, the program seeing how the back testing works with my strategy and the futures market, but you need a Windows laptop to have it and I don't. So we're gonna have to postpone the live stream for Forex Tester. Until then, let's just hang out. What's up? What's good? What at what a? Oh my God, chill. Um, but hey friends, hello. Shorted oil yesterday and did not work out. Same Z's and I didn't catch the long signal for oil today and it made me really upset. What are you gonna do? I was on freaking calls today. I got the alert. It said, buy oil. Mew, mew, mew. Not necessarily, it didn't actually say that, but it said, hey, your downward trend line's getting crossed. The price of oil is going up. And I was on a Zoom call and I freaking missed it. <laughs> Sucks. It is what it is. Can a player just keep in touch? Que paso? What's up, what's up? First time here. Well, hello, AJ. You picked a great one to come for the first time because I am on one. I'm just kidding. I had uno mas glass of wine. Besides the point. Anyways, this is just gonna be, this is gonna be a fun live stream, so hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to the live stream. Letting everybody join on. Hello, David. Richard, you are just always, always a great fan. Love having you on here. My Apple Watch is on the charger right now. I suppose it makes me feel a bit better, as it should. I mean, we I took the signal, I had a signal to go short, um, didn't work out, I took a normal loss, but I wasn't able to make up for the loss on the upside of oil because I was busy today. I hate being busy sometimes. Being a trader, <laughs> you should have more freedom. Instead, I'm pursuing many endeavors, so I am quite busy. Um, do you have an unusual way to trade? To be honest, I think maybe some people do think it's unusual. It's hella simple. First of all, I'm looking at my chart right now. Where is that upward green line way back in the day from? That needs to go. That thing is long gone, old news. But anyways, I guess it is considered um, an unusual way. Not, not really unusual, but maybe incredibly simple. Love the energy. <laughs> Thank you. Do you use a higher time frame momentum for your trade bias? I don't know what higher time frame momentum means, but I do use a higher time frame. Um, ha 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 ha. Okay, hold on. Let me just adjust some things here. <sighs> okay. There we go. All right, let's. Um, there is a cursor on you. There is a cursor on me. Hello. Thank you for letting me know because if I was to put that. In some of my reels for Instagram, there'd be a big fat mouse on my face. So we're gonna move that over. Thank you for letting me know. You are a gem. Jimmy. <laughs> that was funny. I did not even realize that was your name. You're a gem. Um, I uploaded some shorts on my channel today showing my Indian way. The ban list. To the ban list. Huh. Well done. Oh, well, I must have missed something. I missed something. Hey, friends. 
right? I've been going live quite often. I am, I am proud of myself. I don't know if we're going to call it manifesting or what, but um, I am, I am consistent. That's what's on my, that's what's in my journal. I can guarantee you there are about 10 pages in there that says, I am consistent. I am a boss ass bitch. No husky voice. No, we're back to normal. My voice is here. I feel like Ariel, it's back. Ursula is gone. Speaking of which, the new Ariel movie is coming out soon. Um, I already bought my ticket. I'll be going to see it. Aww. A friend from Nashville told me my setup was superb. All right, so what am I doing here? I was getting ready to do something and I forgot. Oh, I was gonna tell you guys when I'm gonna go see The Little Mermaid. Not relevant whatsoever, but whatever. Ah, yes, I'm gonna go see it next Saturday. Hey friends, do you find trading during the pit sessions causes you to have to make faster adjustments? Um, remind me what the pit sessions are. I am trying to get to everybody's comments. You changed my mindset on strategy. Simple strategies have big gains. I'm telling you, they absolutely do. It's, it's quite fascinating to be honest. Okay, one thing that I hate is this light in my hair. This lighting, it's fine, whatever. Oh, the cursor, jeez, thank you. Oh my God, what am I gonna do without you, Jim? Good night. I cannot have that thing up in my face. <laughs> thank you. Do you have a trader group in LA? No, I would love to get one together. That sounds like so much freaking fun. Left a lot on the table today. Um, no, absolutely. Yeah, I missed, I missed it. I didn't catch any of the long positions for oil. I didn't catch any of it. None of that move. It was sad. It was sad. Your thoughts on smart money concepts on five minute time frame. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have much experience with any other strategies. Only mine. Um, have you ever tried ICT? No. So I've only ever used this incredibly simple trend line strategy with support and resistance. Crude oil pit session is from nine to 2.30 Eastern. Um, I, it doesn't quite affect me much because I'm trading in such a high time frame. It's a four hour time frame. So. No. Now, if, if I've got stop losses and take profits set, um, they usually will get hit during that um, session for sure. Yeah. What broker do you use? I use TradeStation. I have used them, you guys, since literal day one. I think I've been using them for like, like five years. They've been in the game for a long time. My uncle, who trades, has also used them. And this is what we're gonna do since I'm an influencer. I'm going to drop the link to my affiliate with them. Cool story. Um, I've been trading TradeStation for like 100 years. To be honest, it's been 84 years, not 100. <laughs> um, but but um, it's cool because now I get like affiliate stuff. Now I get um, to benefit on, you know, now that I have a following on social media, I also get to all of these cool companies, these cool platforms that I've used in the past, I get to, you know, kind of collaborate with. It's pretty neat. I've never used Thinkorswim, but there are a lot of people that I know that use Thinkorswim. And I feel like I had a student who used Thinkorswim and we were having a hell of a time with just simple things like drawing trend lines on the screen. They weren't as like, it wasn't as intuitive. You couldn't um, adjust the trend lines or draw new ones or put alerts on them. It was, it wasn't quite as intuitive, but yeah, trade station has been in the game for a long time, but they have not updated anything. <laughs> okay. I, you are not wrong, Matthew. You are not wrong. So trade station as a broker. I love, 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 love. I, I have so much trust in them and I have developed such a relationship with them. But with that said, their platform, is a little old school and that's okay. That's fine because I have this beautiful platform, TradingView, where I've connected my broker. So I don't have to use the TradeStation platform, which is yes, has not been updated in a very long time. To be honest, yes, it has been updated, but it's just not quite as intuitive. It's not there yet. They've got a little bit of work to do, but their broker as a whole, amazing. Their platform, mm, not my favorite. I love TradingView. But the fact that you can connect them, I get the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? A little Miley Cyrus, a little Hannah Montana. 
Where's the Supreme mic? It's actually right here. I could grab it, but I don't have the stand. So I'm like, I'm gonna hold a mic now. I gotta figure out what the, I gotta get a new stand. To be honest, that could be a fix. I could do this right now and get one on Amazon, but I'm not gonna do it, but I need to. Also, why the crying laughing face? What do you think you got taken away? Got repossessed? My Supreme mic has been repoed. What indicator do you use for option trading? So I don't have any experience trading options. Does your strategy work on small accounts? You take entries on a four hour, right? That is correct. Um, it does work on small accounts, but I, I think maybe it would depend on how small the account. I, I started my account with 5K and it was, that was plenty, more than enough. I was able to make like $3,000 trades in oil. I know I've got, I've got that one specific, it was one of my best ones, just especially with that amount of capital. Um, uh, I don't see a, please reply. I don't see a, um, a question to that. And now I have lost train of thought. Sorry, friends. What camera do you use? I use a Sony A6000. That's over there. Um, you gotta get the best of both worlds. Oof, the fact that I didn't sing that is, there's something wrong with me. Um, what is your take on CBDC and their implementation? You gotta, you gotta elaborate. I'm not quite sure what CBDC is. Long gold futures. Uh, we will look at gold in a minute. Why do you prefer swing trading? I, to be honest, I kind of wanted to change my, my style of trading a little bit to have a lot less screen time. Oh, my face is getting oily. To have a lot less screen time, screen, screen, no, screen time. To have a lot less screen time, I wanted to place less trades, I wanted to have bigger profits, and that's just what comes along with swing trading. I am central bank digital currency. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you guys, look at you guys, look at you guys. Um, I just wanted to, I wanted to have a little bit more freedom with my trading. Day trading is quite, um, taxing nah, it's just it involves a little bit more labor I'm not sure the words I'm looking for here but it's like you're you're on the charts a lot more often you're, you're looking at the charts you're probably you know getting five hours of screen time unless you you know go ahead and hit your targets or whatever it may be but I wanted less time on the charts and I wanted bigger profits and I wanted to just be able to hold positions for a lot longer so it's something that I'm gonna stick out with for the rest of the year and then maybe by the end of the year I'll go through all my data and compare it to my day trading the year before and then see, okay, is swing trading truly for me or was day trading better for my style? So I'm gonna, at the end of the year this year, I'll kind of go through and do a little, uh, I don't know, a little overview of each year and see which one's better for me. So far, um, I've had record trades already using swing trading. Um, I've already had a record month, so I'm, I'm hitting a lot of PRs when it comes to the swing trading. So swing trading could very well be for me, or maybe the fact that I'm just where I'm at in my trading career, the pressure has been taken off of my trading, so now my trading is just significantly you know, increased. It's done so much better. Um, okay, let me go back to some, some questions here. Where are you from? What state? Um, I am from Florida, but I'm in Nashville right now, so a lot of southern roots but I'm living in LA. I'm all over the place. Um, let's see what else we got. Do, does TradeStation have 0% commission? No, it has commissions, um, but they're very low. What do you think about smart money concepts? I don't have any experience with smart money concepts or ICT or to be honest, really any other strategy than the one that I use. Um, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> So I'm just gonna fire them off. All right, if I can go back and find them, let me know. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, MES. Um, so I am not doing the micros anymore. So I have made it to the minis. So I will be trading ES. Day trading stresses me out too much too. I've been looking for somebody who swing trades. That's me. Yep, that's me. Um, how much? of a factor is the time of year on the price of crude. I don't think I have enough experience with crude to really say that you know a certain type of year is better for crude oil. Um, although now that I have, uh, I, I was gonna say now that I have Tradezilla connected to um, my broker, it, it, the amount of data and stats that it gives me, maybe I could kind of compile all of the data that I have for crude oil in the past 
I've only got Tradezilla. I've only had it for like this year. I'm sure I can kind of back backlog uh, the trading before. But I was gonna say that maybe I could use Tradezilla data to go through um, oil to see one of my best months. But I don't think my best month means the best month for, for everyone. So that's, that's a little bit of a tricky question. Um, how come you're not constantly in a position in, hold on, in position switching long to short? There's always short-term trend lines being broken. Um, well, no, there's not always trend lines being broken um, in a four hour. So if you're drawing trend lines in a four hour time frame, I mean, I usually will only have a downward line and an upward line. Um, I mean, that was kind of a good question, but I, I mean, unless I start going into a smaller time frame, then yes, there's plenty of trend lines. Trend lines get broken all the time, especially in a five minute time frame, a one hour time frame. Those bad boys are getting broken. Those are absolutely long signals, short signals. But since I am trading in the four hour time frame, there's just not as many signals that I get. My alerts don't go off very often. <laughs> Try moon phase trading. You're funny. Um, is that your stop loss? Um, no, I don't have a stop loss on here. That's just showing you the current price of oil. Um, Nirav, if you go watch my last live stream, I did my Tradezilla. Um, when should someone leave their job and be a full-time trader? Um, as far as those questions, guys, I feel like I would, I would send you over to Umar. He's got a much better idea. He's got incredible amounts of knowledge. I just don't know. I feel like it's different for everyone. Maybe when you're comfortable, you have enough savings. It's, it's a tricky question for sure. Hmm. Short oil right now. Um, we can go over oil now. How effective is your strategy on the five minute time frame? So most of my trading career was spent on the five minute time frame. I've got more experience trading the five minute than I do the four hour or even the one hour. So I absolutely um, have more experience with the five minute. And absolutely, yeah, you, you can very well be profitable using a trend line trading strategy with a five minute. Just you gotta understand that you're gonna be placing a lot more trades. Um, I have been profitable since I watched your channel. Mo, I love that. What did you do before trading? I did many things. Oh my God, there's still a mouse on my face. Where are you, Jim? You're not helping me. <laughs> Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to move my chat over here. There we go. Oh, jeez. I don't have any experience trading crypto. Um, okay, let's do some chart analysis. I am going to, huh, okay. Where'd my chat go? Can't find it. There it is. Okay, let's do some chart analysis. I, I highly doubt I'm gonna be placing a trade tonight, guys. I'm on a four hour time frame, and unless I get a signal to place a trade, I absolutely don't wanna trade just to trade. So what we're gonna do is let's go over. We're in oil, we're on a four hour time frame. So I missed an opportunity to go long when the price did one of two things. Not only did it break out of a downward trend line, but it also broke out of an area of resistance. So that was double confirmation that I missed out on, kind of a bummer, but to be honest, it looks like it's pulling back right now. So could, uh, I mean, if it, if it pulls back, it may only pull back to this area that was the previous resistance, now may be the new support. So we'll see. I'm still bummed that I missed that. Would have been just a beautiful move. Um, that was my signal to go long. I missed it. I was doing Zoom calls today, but it is what it is. Um, so I won't be making many decisions in oil until, until A, I get a better idea of a pullback so that I can find a new downward trend. And then B, if, if I'm thinking a short position here, it's got to at minimum cross this area of support and this upward trend line, which it is so incredibly far away from. So short positions in oil, I probably won't be getting the signal to take any until maybe not even, not even this week, probably next week, maybe the end of this week, we'll see, but it's, it's got to at minimum cross this area of resistance and this upward trend line, this green upward trend line. So it's got to do quite a few things for me to think short. Right now, I'm, I have no reason to think short positions. It crossed out of a, a higher time frame downward trend that it was following along for a while. 
So long positions for sure. Um, now it hasn't quite gotten to this area of resistance up here, this 73.86. So, well, we're in limbo, we're in limbo. I can't make many decisions right now. I, I missed the buy signal and that's where I would be right now. I'd be in, I'd currently be in a long position. Even though we've got some pullback right here in these past two candles, I'd still be comfortable in my long position. But right now, since I missed it, I've just gotta, I have to sit on my hands and wait for some more um, candles to progress for more, just to get more data so that I can kind of identify the, the next trend or the new trend. Okay, going back to some of my comments. To answer your question from before, Go long on crude oil. I missed the long position um, on a daily time frame. Data. So it's after hours right now. Do you typically trade? Okay, that's a good question. So regardless if it is after hours, if it's during New York session, whatever it may be, if I get an alert that one of my trend lines is being crossed or the price is at one of my trend lines, um, my I'll get a little email from TradingView and it will tell me that, you know, either my downward or my upward trend line in whatever instrument I'm trading is getting crossed and that's my indication to get in. So since I am swing trading and I'm in these positions for sometimes over a week, um, that's when I get my indication. So it's not, it's not based on a certain session. Uh, it is purely based on when the price is crossing out of a trend. So incredibly, incredibly simple. I'm waiting for the price to tell me when to trade. So I'm not sitting here in front of my computer, you know, when New York session starts and waiting for price to do something. So I am, to be honest, I go about my day and as soon as I get an alert, then I'm like, okay, now I need to get some chart time. Now I need to look at the charts and I'll be honest with you, I look at them on my phone. So I'll get an alert, I will pull up my trading view and then I will you know, make my decision from there. Um, Tori, I found you on Make Hogue Money. Ah, that's so cool, I'm stoked you found me. That was fun. Um, I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit proud of myself, so <laughs> the the little mini analysis that I did on taking a short position because a upward trend line was crossed and saying I would take profit at this level, it ended up getting to that level, it was pretty neat, but we didn't actually, he didn't take my trade, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> he ended up making himself some money, so that was great. That was fun, but I haven't done like a five minute or even a 30 minute chart analysis in a very long time, so that was, that was fun for me. Um, do I prefer wicks or the bodies for the trend line? So I will use the wicks. I will use the wicks. So you can see that I'm using the wick here on the very bottom of crude oil, that like 64-ish area. I use the wick for that. Do you take your entry based on the alert on the lower time frame? Do you take your entry based on the alert or do you look at a lower time frame after the alert? No, so it'll be solely based on that four hour time frame. So my alert will be on the four hour time frame and I'll take my position based on the four hour time frame. Now I know a lot of people will go into, you know, lower time frames. Like if they're in a four hour, maybe they'll go look at a one hour for a confirmation, but I, I just, I keep it easy. I, I stay in the four hour. Now there are times where if I'm spending a few hours on the charts or I'm, you know, kind of overanalyzing my trade or I'm sitting in front of the computer. I'll, I'll look at the one hour to see what it's doing. It's sometimes it's nice to just see a few more candles on the screen, but for the most part, I'm, I'm placing the trade on my phone, my buy, my sell, my entry, my exits on my phone, and it's in the four hour time frame. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea, similar to think that it provides a lot of freedom, good stuff. I'm back to trading. Hello, Dennis, I'm stoked. All right, so this morning, off the 30 minute, both ES and NQ, there was a TLB to the upside and then a retest. You don't play those, I'm guessing, due to the time frame. Yeah, so if there is a, uh, let me see the time frame, you said 30 minute time frame. Yeah, to be honest, if I'm in a four hour, what the price does within 30 minutes, I probably won't get to see what you see. So I, I only wait for, I will at least pull up the chart. Let's at least pull up the chart because I did get a signal for, I got a, a lot of signals today. So a lot of, there's a lot of movement today. Um, let's see, trading view, let's go to, we'll start with the ES. So I absolutely got a buy signal for sure. Buy signal to go long when this downward trend was broken. So somewhere I would have gotten the buy signal to go long somewhere around 41.55. And my exit would have been close to this 41.81 where it's hit in the past. 
here. So it would have, it would have been a beautiful trade. Easy. And to be honest, it would have been, this technically would have been a day trade because it would have hit within the day. It would have hit that same day. Um, if I open the hourly, let's see how long it took to actually hit that. Um, so my trade would have only lasted two hours. Nice. Now my entry would have been based on a four hour time frame, and I would be anticipating for this to be a swing trade and take a little bit longer. But since there was so much volatility and there was so much movement, it ended up hitting within two hours. But I would have gotten the signal. Um, I did. I did get the signal. I didn't. I wasn't able to take it. But as soon as the price crossed here, my alert went off. It said, "Hey, uh, the ES is crossing your downward trend line." I'll be honest. I don't know what it actually says on my email. Let's see. It usually just says something like. As soon as I know that I've got an email from TradeStation, I mean TradingView, let's see what they say. It says something like, okay, here we go. So alert, CL1 explanation point, the four hour ray is crossing. So that's exactly what it tells me. And you can see a lot of, you guys can't see, but that little black logo, TradingView alert, TradingView alert, TradingView alert, TradingView alert, TradingView alert. A lot of alerts from TradingView today. <laughs> um. Not sure if you answered this, but I know, I know you have a lot of chats. Maybe that's charts. Do you only swing trade on your personal account? Um, doesn't seem possible on top step. Correct. So on top step, I have to go back to the day trading mindset, day trading mentality, which is hella tricky because it was already hard to try swing trading. <laughs> so it is, it is absolutely um, a, a a tough tough transition trying to swing back and forth but you are a day trader, right? I mean, I am a day trader, I guess, if, if I'm trading. I, I think I will always forever call myself a day trader. I have day traded for five to six, seven, six? We'll say like six-ish years of my trading career was day trading. This is the first year I'm swing trading, so I am a day trader through and through. It is what it is. <laughs> are you shorting oil right now? I don't have any positions open. No positions open, I had a busy day. Um, can you tell us more about the product Forex Texture you mentioned? Absolutely. So I wanted to, now what's cool is, I mean, you'll have to tune back in, Dennis. I'm doing a, a dedicated live stream that is specifically for that product, um, but I don't have it downloaded now because I have a Windows, this daggum thing, and I need, or no, I'm sorry, take that back. I have a Mac and I need a Windows. But I'm gonna do a dedicated stream that's just going through the, the setup process, the downloading process, and then going through the entire program and kind of showing you guys how I can back test my my strategy and what's cool is yes it's called forex tester but you can also back test the futures market too so it's super cool and makes total sense for me so i am i'm gonna do a dedicated live stream for that just stay tuned dennis i i gotta figure out gotta figure out the windows situation so we'll we'll try to see what i'm gonna do in that sense um Correct, top step doesn't let you hold overnight. Well, no, technically you can hold overnight, but your trade needs to be closed by 3 p.m. the following day, and then you can open back up. So as long as your trade is closed by 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, I could be wrong, don't quote me on it, but something around those that time frame, um, you have to close and then you can open back up. How long have you been trading and what is your win rate? I have been trading for eight years now. Um, my win rate is different every single month. Right now is hella good. My win rate is nasty. If you go look at my last live stream that I did, um, I went over my trade Zella, but my stats are different every month. Um, how many option contracts do you take? So I don't have any experience trading options. I only trade the futures market, which is, yes, we trade contracts, but it's not quite the same as option contracts. You're crazy if you short oil. Um, I'm not in any positions right now. Um, tell us about the feeling when you start to be profitable. <laughs> it's very cool. It's very cool, but it is absolutely not like a, it's not a, you re, you wake up one day and realize you're profitable. It is absolutely like this, this slow and steady process for sure. Um, what microphone is that? It's just a little mini mic from Amazon. Um, make a video about your journey and how you started. Oh, dude, I already got, check out my whole, my whole social media. That is um, absolutely about all of the above. Um, I totally forgot I have 12 p.m. tomorrow, which is the same time as ours. Oh. Time to 
time to get back to work. Thanks for the stream. Absolutely. Have a good one. Ah, Ziggy. Love that name. Um, did you take the long on this breakout? No, I missed it. I didn't get it. How do you feel that every win is someone's loss? That's, that's deep stuff. Deep, deep, deep stuff. And I'll be honest with you, it's never... It's never hit me. I guess I'm just not that deep of a thinker when it comes to the psychology is not the word I'm looking for. Um, philosophy? No. It's just I don't get that deep in it. Like I understand that some people are losing and some people are winning, but it's just it's just like buying and selling anything, you know. Um, are you under 30? I am 30 years old. What is your biggest, well, hello there, Elevate Basics. Get out of here, stop it. Love you. Hmm, my biggest challenge in my trading journey. What a beautiful question. Let me think on that one, let me ponder. My biggest challenge. I gotta say, it's when you get to the point, this is awful, guys, but it's when you get to the point where you want to quit <laughs> and you've got to like just dig deep, deep, to be able to just find that motivation to just be like, you know what, I'm gonna keep going. Oh God, it's, it's the hardest part of trading is when you have even like to the point where you have decided you are done and you are gonna quit and you're like, I give up, this freaking sucks. It is way too hard. And then when you find the motivation to yet still continue, that is the hardest part, that is the hardest part. And I think that applies to anything in life. You know, if you're pursuing, you know, entrepreneurial businesses or whatever it may be, sports or uh, gym goals, whatever it is, when it just gets so hard that you wanna quit and you're like, okay, you that's like such a pivotal moment. You're either gonna quit or you're gonna keep going. It's, it's the hardest part. Um, any tips on scalping the five minute chart? Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of tips for, for scalping the five minute chart. It's just a matter of if just being aware that if you're trading um, trend line breakouts in the five minute time frame that you are going to be placing a lot of trades, um, giving yourself some wiggle room. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of advice for the five minute. I'm sorry. I wish I did. It's great to hear about your uncle from time to time. Does he still trade? Oh, absolutely. He is absolutely trading. The trades that he's making these days are out of this world. They, ab they, mi they, they mind my blow. They blow my mind. <laughs> They're crazy. Um... Let's see what else we got. What else do we got? Do you trade in extended hour or just regular hours? I trade at all hours of the day and the night. Hi, Twinkie. Love that name. Yeah, I trade. I trade at all hours. So I only trade when my alerts go off. When trend, when price crosses a trend line, my alerts will go off and then I will go in. Dude, words, work. I need a water. Ugh. How did you get your daily bias? On the direction market should go. Ooh, I, I try not to create a bias whatsoever. So I am open to whatever direction the market's going in. What do you trade? I trade the futures market. I trade indices, energies, metals. So things like, um, I trade the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P, I trade oil, I trade gold. I have traded corn in the past. I've traded platinum before. Things like that. I'll be honest, I kind of want to look at coffee just for funsies. <laughs> what is it like being a woman in trading? Oh my gosh, as a woman trader, I feel like it's difficult. Did you see it as an advantage or a disadvantage? So I think luckily since I was kind of sheltered from the trading community on social media, I absolutely just stuck to myself. I, I didn't know any different. Now I did have this vision in my head that I thought everyone that traded was like my uncle, just an older white guy. And I was like, okay, so I think that everyone trading is like him. And then when I finally get you know onto social media and I post about trading and then I now am like immersed in the trading community, it turns out it's, first of all, it's incredibly diverse. There's a lot more young people. Now, no, there's not a whole lot of women, but definitely my perspective on what I thought 
you know, traders looked like has changed significantly, incredibly. So it was extremely exciting, especially, so I went to this little workshop in Atlanta and oh my God, there wasn't like one old white guy. It was so cool. <laughs> like I just thought it was like these just really old, like Warren Buffett dudes. And it's like, no, it was like a bunch of cool people. It was the coolest. So yes, there's not a whole lot of women, but there's a lot of diversity and there's a lot of young people, which I, I didn't know to begin with. So that's a great start. But being a woman is very, is very intimidating um, in this kind of, what would you call this? In this uh, niche, in this community, in this demographic, I don't know. It's, it's intimidating for sure, but I think I almost kind of get my confidence out of being, you know, one of the few. Um, why are you trading so much instruments? Isn't it better to focus on one or two? So I, the ones that I actually trade on a normal basis would be gold and oil. Um, the indexes I don't trade on a regular basis, but I do trade them. And I, I watch them all the time. So my watch list consists of those five. I'm always watching them. And to be honest, corn is on there and so is platinum. I, I like to just watch it, see what it's doing. To be honest, let's go. Okay, nothing against old white dudes, I'm just saying. <laughs> I thought that it was solely, that was it. I was like, all right, so we got a bunch of Warren Buffetts and this is gonna be my crowd. But it turns out there's like a bunch of cool people. There's, it's incredibly diverse. I mean, back to what I was saying, it's just very cool. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's go through. I want to show you guys what corn did because it was way cool. Oh gosh. Okay, if anyone has anything to say about appearances, I'm going to put you in timeout because we're just talking stocks. I'm just kidding. We're not talking stocks. We're talking futures. We're just talking trading. Let's just keep it trading related, my friends. Okay, so we're going to look at oil and no, I want to. Sh I have lost all train of thought. Just give me two seconds to like. Okay, what were we talking about here? Okay, I wanted to show you guys what corn did. It made a pretty crazy move. And I don't know if you guys knew there was like some news, there's some news that came out about either, I think it was either Russia getting corn from China or vice versa. And I mean, I knew that would absolutely get, get it moving, but I just didn't think it would do this. So I thought that corn would eventually fill this gap. I mean, what a move, what an insane gap down. And then yet it is just continuing down further. I, I was pretty convinced that it would come a little bit closer to closing that gap, but it did not. I mean, corn is, is very interesting. So when I traded corn, I think it was back here in, was it September of last year? No, maybe it was, um, yeah, no, it was here. It was around February. I capitalized on some of this short move here, but oh my God, it took so much energy out of me. I held that thing for like 18, 19, 20. I, I held that thing forever. And then finally it moved down. And I think I, I, I clipped out at like um, 6.62 ish, pretty early. And I could capitalize on so much more, but the fact that I was so exhausted for most of that sideways movement, oh my God, it killed me. Um, um, what else do we got? Finally, girl trading. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. My biggest gain, my biggest gain was actually in March and that was a $10,000 trade in oil. It was pretty cool. But I'll say what's different is I, I expected, every time I hit like a personal best or like a personal record, I expect like this, this like um, adrenaline rush and like this moment of celebration and it's, it's so cool and I, it was so anticlimactic. There was nothing, there was no emotion. I, I mean, yes, I ended up posting about it, like maybe hours later, maybe even the next day, but it was so anticlimactic. I didn't have a rush of emotion. It wasn't, there was, I mean, none of that. It was, it was, it was different than what I expected. And I'm sure that's a good thing. I'm sure that's a good thing. Um, correct, so I only do, I'm only doing chart analysis um, based on price action. So 
whatever the price does in accordance to my trend lines and my support and resistance is my strategy. Um, taking my time and doing well so far. Ah, oh, I love that. Really? Really? Oh God, can I make someone a moderator? Um, it's fine, whatever. Are you still trading with top step? Yes. So I'm still trading with stop, stop step, stop step, top step, but I gotta be honest with you guys, I am, I am struggling with one thing and one thing only, and that is consistency. <laughs> it is, I, I gotta be, I gotta be brutally honest. It is so easy to just trade my personal account. I'm so used to it when I get the signal to, get in a position, I just go right on my phone and I, I place my trade. Whereas if I want to, if I want to truly give prop firm trading an honest effort and an honest shot and be able to give an honest review on it, I have to be, I have to be intentional about it. I have to, I don't know if I'm going to need to put my personal account on pause, like just literally pause and then commit to like a month's worth of, you know, top, step trading man that is hard to say fast top step top step top step top step trading if if i want to truly like give it an an honest go i think i'm gonna have to put my personal account on pause like i'm i don't have the the brain power to trade multiple accounts at one time i just i truly don't um so that is that's something that i've been struggling with uh when it comes to top step I, I have yet to really give it an honest effort. So no, I am, I'm not funded yet and I haven't passed the, the phases or the challenges yet. Um, is it easier than the rules of top step? But it teaches you to be deliberate. Oh, and oh um, my God, yes. So when it comes to trading your personal account versus trading a prop account, I mean, one thing that I have absolutely seen is that like, um, was it Mike? Yeah, like Mike just said, you, you, you gain so much more discipline. Um, you're so much more intentional, deliberate, methodical with your trading. So prop firm trading makes you incredibly uh, disciplined when it comes to trading, but I, I'm not that disciplined. My, my own personal trading that I, or my own trading that I use, my strategy on my own account, it's, is not as disciplined. I don't have these, you know, profit targets. I don't have these, you know, percentage of drawdowns. Now, yes, I do have a risk management system, but it's not as strict. So. It's it's something that I'm trying to I'm trying to work through, and it's it's not an overnight thing. So I've I started my top step account in you know February or March. It was February or March, and I I have yet to pass it, and I have yet to be consistent. So I absolutely, um, I mean at least at least the minimal amount of information that I've gathered so far is that it takes it takes um, consistency and being intentional about it. I I got to be so much better with it. Have you tried algorithmic trading? No, I haven't. Why don't you trade options? I just don't have any experience with options. What is the trading combine? The trading combine is the back end of Top Step, which is a prop firm, and it just shows you kind of your progress, um, how much you're up, how much you're down, how close you are to your profit target. Understanding a system that works for you is important. Absolutely. What's some guidance you can give to a newbie trader? Um, I would say your name sounds very familiar. Frank Spencer. I feel like I know you. Um, hmm, advice for a newbie trader, I would say would be to spend as much time simulated trading as you possibly can. Make sure that your strategy that you're learning or that you're testing in the simulated markets, you know so well that it is second nature to you. It is like, it is what else there's another word besides second nature it just comes naturally you just can visually look at the chart you're seeing you know entries exits it's second nature to you and then once you've developed a comfortability with that strategy then um, I'd say then go live a lot of people make the mistake of just trying to go live too soon I feel like that's that's one of the biggest ones well yes and risk management for sure um what else do we got my friends how volatile is corn? I, I don't have enough experience with corn, but I thoroughly enjoy watching it. <laughs> what is your trading session? So I don't trade any specific sessions. I am trading on four hour time frames, and I just wait for my alerts to go off and that's when I enter my trade. So that could be at 
anytime. I could get a alert. Alert could go off now while we're on. Let's actually let's go through some of my watch lists and see if see if any of these are getting close to hitting some alerts. Okay, we'll start with oil. Let's just do a quick little run through for oil. So oil, oil, I missed the move. I got an indication to go long around. That's not correct. Five, nine. This must be on LA time, not. Oh yeah, hold on. No, this is Chicago. That's still not right. I got the I got the um, alert to go long around like oh this is right like 9 a.m. 10 a.m. today. Uh, I still feel like it was like 10 a.m. today, but whatever. Around like 10 a.m. I got the indication to take a long position. I missed it. So just according to my strategy, first things first, we can see this is double confirmation. Not only did the price of crude oil break through this level of resistance where the price of oil has gotten to the 7183, fell down. Came all the way up to the 7183, fell down. Came up, uh, looked like it was just kind of tapping through and then broke through. Now, not only did it break through that level of resistance, but it also broke through this downward trend line that was placed on a much higher time frame and has held true since April 14th. So this is a very significant high time frame trend line that it crossed out of. So double confirmation here. I, I had a lot of FOMO today. Actually, to be honest, it, it gave me quite a significant amount of anxiety that I missed this move. Um, so much so that I had to make a story about it on my Instagram and just talk about it. But regardless, if you get the FOMO, if you get the anxiety, if you get the weird feelings, if you can have the discipline to not get in because of FOMO, like that's all that matters. Like sure, you can be bummed, you can be frustrated, you can feel anxious, have anxiety, this weird tight feeling in your chest, <laughs> whatever that was that I had today, I had it. But yes, you can have it. You can feel those emotions. I mean, you have those emotions for a reason. But having the discipline to not get in because of the FOMO is what sets you apart. Okay, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Okay, now let's look at the NQ, which is the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ, I haven't adjusted any of my trend lines in a while, but I did get an indication to go long, but that was back on the, let's see, when it crossed here. Now there's two indications to go long here in the NASDAQ. One, it could have been back on May 10th, somewhere around like 9 a.m. when it crossed this downward trend line. Now yet again, this is another double confirmation. So it broke out of this area of resistance and this downward trend line. Beautiful entry. Now if you are not the type that enters upon break, you absolutely could have waited for the retest here, which would have been around this 13, 13, 317-ish area, where the price of the NASDAQ crossed this downward trend line, retested it from the other side, and then took off. So two beautiful areas to go long in the NASDAQ. I didn't get either one of those, but at least we can kind of break down why would we have gone long in the NASDAQ. Now, one thing that I will do since the price has kind of progressed and it's, it's populated on the chart, now I can see that we've created a steeper upward trend line based on this four hour time frame. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna track that. I wanna track how steep the price of the NASDAQ is going. So I'm gonna come in with a ray and I'm gonna use this last low. Really Slack, are you really going to send me that alert right now? Sorry, I just got an alert. We gotta, okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use the last low that we have or the last touch point on this trend line. We're gonna come up and track these two touch points, one, two, so we've got three touch points on this upward trend line. I'm gonna make it green just to be able to differentiate the upward trend lines from the downward trend lines, especially if they start intersecting. Okay, so we've got an upward trend line. I'm gonna adjust this one slightly because that wick has poked out just a hair. There we go, so it looks a little more clean. Now for a downward trend line. I am going to see if there's anywhere else I can put this. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that downward trend line to remind me that I missed the move. So as long as I don't get FOMO and I can find a better entry for maybe a short position, as far as the long positions go, I missed the move. I missed it. That is what it is. I, it seems like a common denominator here. <laughs> I, I wasn't able to capitalize on this long position. Not only was I able to not capitalize on the break, but I didn't capitalize on the, the retest either. So I missed the move on this one. I'm going to keep this downward trend line to remind me of the move that I missed so that I don't get this FOMO or try to find new areas to get in. So until the price can get to or break out of some pretty significant levels here, which is at, let's see what this is at, 13, 
835. We're still a little bit of ways away from that. Um, if we start breaking out of some of these upward trend lines, I could be thinking short positions, but right now I missed the move for the long position and my alerts won't be going off until at minimum this trend line gets crossed. So let's go ahead and add an alert on that. Notifications. Um, okay, once per bar, that's what we want, create. All right, there we go. So an alert is set. If the price of the NASDAQ comes down, crosses through this upward trend line, I could be thinking short positions. Now, where would I be thinking short positions to? I very well could just take a, a very, a fairy, a fairy, a very quick position and just try to look for somewhere close to this level of 13,346. See if it'll act as support. Um, I think that's the exact scenario I would take. Now, unless I start seeing it cross out of multiple trend lines, if it can cross out of both of these trend lines and this area of support, absolutely taking short positions all day. If anything, I'll just be adding to my position, kind of scaling into a position. But for the most part, if the price of the NASDAQ crosses this upward green trend line and um, I get that alert, I would be thinking short positions until this level here, somewhere close to this level, probably slightly above it, maybe somewhere closer to this 13,369 area. But that is the, um, that's the idea for the NASDAQ. Let's see the YM. All right, the YM, we didn't quite get a, a candle to close outside of this downward trend line. So what I'm gonna do is slightly adjust this to encapsulate these two candles for this downward trend. And if we do continue down, for the Dow, I won't be getting any signals to do anything anytime soon. Um, it's the price is so far away from these upward trend lines that absolutely it would take a quite a significant move for me to think short positions. And to be honest, I absolutely need to mark up this level. We've got touch point here, touch point here, touch point here, and here, and that is around 30, 3302. Let's mark that up. Let's mark that up. There we go. Okay. Okay, that looks fair. This one here, let's take a look. Also, I'll go back to some of my comments. Sorry, I've been kind of drifted off. <laughs> I haven't looked at some of the some of the questions we've got. Um Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. New York session only. Get it. Okay, okay. Where do you get your signals from? So I don't get any signals. Um, when I say that I get an alert, that means that one of the trend lines that I have drawn myself, that I've manually drawn on the screen got crossed. So I'm not doing any, any indicators, no signals. Um, this is based on my own analysis. Consistency takes patience. Yes, it does. Consistency makes you profitable. Yes, it does. Um, let's go back down. Wow, these are really old comments. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, can you do the ES? Yes, we will make our way to the ES. When you buy a contract, is it weekly or do you look for a long contract? So when I'm trading the futures market, these contracts will last, and let me show you. So it's not like options. So there's not like time decay. This isn't, this isn't the same as trading options. So I'll show you on, let's use a current contract. So we're gonna use gold, for example. So gold, I'm gonna zoom out and it will tell you when this contract expires. Okay, right here. So the contract for this specific instrument, so for the GMC, G, I'm sorry, GCM, for GCM 2023, this specific contract right here will expire on the 28th of June. On the 28th of June, I then need to move to a new contract. So it'll be GMJ or GMN or GMY. So each of these letters in the ticker symbol means, you know, the, the month and then you add the year. So it's, it's not quite the same as options when it comes to that kind of expiration. Um, let's see what else we got. All right, so those were most of the questions. Okay, sweet, we're caught up, we're caught up. Okay, let's go to 
Let's go to, let's see what else we're trading. All right, it's 9, 10 p.m. 9, 10. Um, I'll hang on here for, for a little bit longer. Maybe we'll hang out till like 9.30. I got on at like 8.30. Yeah, so we'll do like an hour long. Okay, so start bringing in as many questions as you can. Um, we got still about like 20 minutes left, but if you guys want to knock out as many questions as you've got, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Did I do the ES already? I didn't do the ES yet. Okay, let's do the ES. All right, for the ES. So I got a signal. Oh, we did we did do the ES already. That was one of the first ones I did. I'll kind of reiterate, but I'll make it quick. So I absolutely got the signal to take a long position when my downward trend line was crossed. I should have taken a long position anywhere around this 41.55. I'd say like 41.55-ish, 56 is fair. Um, it crossed. It made it close to this level 41.81 which absolutely should have been closed. You always want to put your take profit just below the these levels of support and resistance because there's a possibility that it doesn't quite make it, that it never actually makes it. Now, yes, the reason we have these levels on the screen is because the price will gravitate towards this specific price and then turn around. So you're, yes, these levels are here for a reason, but same with you know stop losses and take profits, just backing off a little bit so that it's not, so that you're not kind of getting caught up in that, you know, that stop loss grab or not quite being able to, to capitalize on that take profit because it didn't quite make it there. So I think giving yourself just a little bit of wiggle room or breathing room when it comes to that take profit or stop loss whenever you're using these levels of support and resistance or supply and demand, whatever it may be, whatever you call it, high water mark, low water mark levels, um, just giving yourself some wiggle room. So the possibility of a, a stop loss hitting, like let's say that you guys get the point. You guys get the point. But um, yes, I got the signal to to go along here. Now, when I say that, I think I make it very confusing. When I say that I got the signal, I, I hope that you guys understand that I just mean I'm not I'm not paying someone for signals. I'm not having someone tell me when to buy or sell. When I when I mean signal, it's it's an alert. I get an alert on my phone that is telling me that based on the trend lines that I've drawn on the screen, the price is crossing them. And I'm telling TradingView to send me an alert when price crosses these trend lines that I've drawn on the screen. So I hope that that clears that part up. Sorry, guys. Um, natural gas was screaming by. Ah, oh, I haven't looked at natural gas in a very, very, very long time. Whoa, Jim's in Franklin. I love Franklin. Hey, Jim. Nice to have a local Tennessee out here. Um, I guess we could take a look at, um, do you have a discord for alerts? So I've never done, I've never done alerts or signals. Um, I am slightly terrified to, to give alerts. I, I mean, I don't know. It's maybe it's because I'm, I don't know. I would, I would much rather you guys, I'd much rather be able to see us placing the same trades because we've made the same analysis not necessarily having people place trades just because that I say so. I don't know, it's a little bit terrifying. It, I mean, I hope that makes sense. I truly, that's the first instinct when I think, all right, I'm gonna be sending out everyone alerts to all these people to take a signal to buy. I'm like, ugh, that sounds like a lot of pressure. <laughs> I would much rather have all of these people do their own chart analysis and then we all come up with the same idea. And we're like, oh yes, actually this is a great time to buy because it crossed this downward trend line. Just going through some more questions. Also, let's just take a look at this chart a little bit more. Um, it does get a little bit messy when we've got a lot of lines on the screen. So sometimes I like to change the color so that yes, I can still see it. Mm, that I can barely see. Mm, I don't know if I like the color of that. I guess it's fine. All right, I can still see it. But I... I didn't necessarily need to track this steeper with an additional, well, you know what, why not, why not? Some people tell me that I got too many trend lines on the screen and then I realize, the fuck, it does not matter. I, but um, I no longer need that downward trend line because price has crossed it. So there are a few reasons why well, I will either keep old trend lines on the screen, it's either to remind me of, you know, entries that I missed or if I'm in a current trade, I always wanna be reminded why I got into that trade. So leaving trend lines on the screen to remind me why I entered a trade, absolutely. Um, 
to remind me maybe of some signals or entries that I missed. But for the most part, when price crosses the trend line and it's no longer relevant, for the most part, just get rid of it. So now we've just got one singular downward line and we've got two little upward lines going. If price, you know, pulls back and then continues steeper, I will then yet, you know, continue with this fan of upward trend lines, absolutely. But this is what we got going. This is the S&P, this is the ES. Um, do you set stop losses when you go long or short? Yes. Um, you'll probably have so many people complain with a signal service, not worth it. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. And it's just, a, I mean, imagine if, if you, you know, if you get, if I myself get part of, you know, get into a, like a fake out breakout or whatever it may be, I, I mean, yes, I have my trend lines in place for mitigating that risk. So if a fake out does happen, I'm not going to lose, you know, stupid amounts of money, but it just sounds like so much pressure and so much like, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of pressure. And yes, I'm sure there is probably a tremendous amount of complaints with kind of doing a signal service. It's not quite something I'm, I'm interested in. I mean, some people do it and I think that's way cool that they have the, the uh, confidence or even, oh, I'm not sure what, what the word is I'm looking for. Just, just to be able to give out signals. That sounds amazing. I'm not there. Um, let's see what else we got. Do you have any thoughts on corn? How do you calculate your stop loss? So my stop loss will be in no, I don't use any indicators. Um, Ace, if you, I feel like I just need like a, a an FAQ, <laughs> a frequently asked question. But I feel like most of the people watching probably know the, the time frame that I use or what I trade. Um, One click trading mode. Um, I don't know what that means, but it sounds fairly simple and it's probably similar to what I do. Bitcoin, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, it is 918, so we've got about like 10 more minutes, guys. If there's maybe a specific chart we wanna break down or if we wanna just continue with some um, Q and A's, uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna spend the rest of this 10 minutes kind of cater into you guys, whatever you need. Um, I don't use any indicators. Um, I don't have any experience with options, no. You know, we could spend this time talking about something other than trading, like maybe um, the Lakers and the Nuggets tomorrow, or zodiac signs or <laughs> um how do you draw your support and resistance and on what time frames um i like to look for areas where the price of whatever instrument you're trading has hit multiple times and then turned around essentially that's like the most elementary way i can explain it so on a four hour time frame kind of zoomed out um, rarely will i go to the daily but daily is incredibly significant but usually if you draw a level on the daily like you, you only need to do that one time. Um, Nashville or LA, which one do you like better? Hmm. I, ooh, that's tricky. Ooh, I can't answer that one. I can't, I feel like I'm gonna hurt some feelings. Um, I love your videos, by the way, inspiring. Thank you, Parker. Thank you. I have been trying to get my sisters into trading also. <laughs> Cycling. Oh, guys, I haven't read, ridden my bike in so long. Ooh, okay, we got some Geminis up in the house. I'm a Leo. My birthday month is in August. Lakers are the Nuggets. Lakers all day. All day. Do you still back test? No, I don't. I'm going to be honest, guys. <laughs> That's funny. Um, how many years did it take you to be consistently profitable? I always say three, and I think three was like the the gist of it. But it it was just such a slow progression. It it takes it takes progress. I would say like between year three and four, it was just this like 
kind of snowball effect. Um, it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't like, okay, on day one of year three, boom, profitable. Like it's, it's absolutely a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. <laughs> Oh gosh, I know, I know. What do you do after bad trading days? I will do a lot of self-care. Um, I will do face masks, some under-eyed jelly pads, I'll get my nails done, um, a lot of self-care. Uh, essential oils, a nice candle, <laughs> um, time away from the charts, a lot of self-care for sure. Um, is it true that trading fastens your aging? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. I look a little bit younger than I am. My favorite comfort food. Ooh, ooh, shrimp and grits all day. <laughs> God damn, I love shrimp and grits. Um, I hate oil futures. I'm sorry, Chris. Did you take a loss today? Is that why? I get it. Sometimes I hate it too, but I love it. I love it and I hate it. <laughs> um... Uh, 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 Houston in the house. Okay, what's up? What's up, what's up? Um, what do you know about life insurance? Not a whole lot, but I do have a CFO now who's trying to help me out with that. <laughs> what is the lowest time frame that you look or trade in? I will, to be honest, I, I stick to the four hour mostly. I mean, I rarely will go to the one hour. Sometimes I do, but I, I stay in the four hour. Meditate and yoga. Absolutely. I have been... I've been slacking on the hot yoga. I used to do hot yoga religiously, religiously. But since I'm trying to do, um, I'm trying to put on some weight, some muscle mass. And by doing that, I'm doing like some, some weight lifting. And hot yoga was, I mean, a little bit contradictory because you're just kind of sweating everything out. But I, I kind of got like a, an honest opinion um, from a personal trainer and he, he didn't think that would, that would make an issue. I mean, diet, he said, was the most important part. So regardless of if you're doing hot yoga and weight training, the, the diet is the most, um, the most uh, significant role in putting on muscle mass. Uh, US 30 is great for me. Hi, everyone. You're a Leo. Um, it's way too volatile. I find that oil is better to trade than currency pairs. What strategy did your famous uncle teach you? <laughs> He's not a famous uncle, but um, he taught me trend lines and support and resistance. And was it stocks or Forex? So it was, I first learned how to trade with the stock market. So the, the, like, the fundamentals or like the basis of my trading, um, the, the foundation, that's what I'm looking for. The foundation of my trading started with the stock market. It was things like um, Home Depot, Facebook, Netflix, uh, Amazon, way back when it was a hell of a lot cheaper. Um, I Priceline, Ford, a lot of a lot of stocks like that. That's where I, I got the foundation of my, my strategy for sure. Protein shakes help, oh yeah. Thank you guys. When do you enter a trade? I will usually enter when price is breaking out of a trend line. Oil goes sideways a lot. Um, it does go sideways a lot, but once it finally is not going sideways anymore, those are incredible moves. So having the energy to be able to make it through those you know, sideways movements, those ranges, to be able to then in turn still continue to trade when the trend actually happens, I mean, it's so rewarding, so rewarding. Uh, all right, we're looking at 9.24. We got five minutes, guys. Just shoot as fast as you can. All the questions. What you got? Boom, 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 boom. Do you trade a personal account or a funded account? I trade a personal account <laughs> for the most part. I am currently trying to pass a phase one of top step, a prop firm account, a funded account. But for the most part, I'm most of my trades are on my personal account. All of my trades are on my personal account. I, I need to do so much better at being intentional about trying to pass these phases and I, I need to do better. That's, that's all I got to say. Um, what else do we got? I don't use Fibonacci, no. I just use um, trend lines and support resistance.
<laughs> Do I play Madden? No, I don't. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever try trading crypto? Absolutely. To be honest, I feel like this year is my year. I might actually get into crypto. Now, I don't believe I'll be getting into crypto trying to day trade it or swing trade it. If I get into crypto, it'll probably be to look for something long term. But yeah, I think this year might be my year where I get into crypto. Do you play any instruments? I do. I play guitar and piano, but it has been a long time since I've done either of those. Well, not that long. Guitar, not too long ago. Piano, it's been a while. Thank you, Bert. How does your strategy work in price discovery as far as targets go? Um, I don't know what price discovery means, I'll be honest. How many hours do you trade a week? I actually, someone just asked me this. Now, they didn't ask me how many hours I trade a week, but they asked me my average hold time on trades. And I'm gonna go back right now and see if I can find it. And the answer was, so I went on my Tradezilla. I just looked at my Tradezilla average and it said for this year, my average hold time is four days, 23 hours and two minutes. <laughs> but there's definitely trades that I've held for two weeks. There was a few trades in corn that I held for like three weeks. Um, but yes, I have traded, uh, I'm, I'm trading, I'm swing trading this year. So my, my trades are gonna be held a lot longer. Do you sing? I don't. Actually, my all my younger sisters sing all of them beautifully. My mom sings. I was not blessed with the ability to sing. But my um, my younger sister was on The Voice. Uh, I believe it was like two two seasons ago. She was on The Voice. It was pretty cool. Um, price discovery is when price breaks out of a long term. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, when price breaks out, that's that's my forte. When price is breaking out of trends or breaking out of areas of support and resistance, that is my signal to get in. Um, how do you keep a balance from being consumed by trading? Oh man, that is tricky. Just find another hobbies, knowing when to take some screen time away, knowing when to cut the screen time, to be honest. Um, do you trade crypto? No, I don't have any experience trading crypto. <laughs> yes, Mike, I was in that corner trade for a long time. <laughs> do you swing because it has less volatility than day trading? Uh, no, I, I swing trade because I, I truly want to just have less screen time and bigger profits to be totally honest. <laughs> Those are the two main things. I'm headed to Gatlinburg for a couple of months. Ooh la la, I have been there and I'm gonna be honest though, I don't remember a daggum thing. I think I maybe did some whiskey tasting. That was kind of cool. Um, before entering a trade, do you do a lot of price action analysis? Oh yeah. So Calvin, I will usually do, I mean, I, I usually have already done my analysis. Like we'll say for example on Sundays. Sundays I will go through each one of my watch lists and I will go ahead and make sure all my trend lines are in the right spot, all of my areas of support and resistance are in the right spot, and then I'll go through and make sure that all of my alerts are set on all of those trend lines and support and resistance. So then by, you know, either whether I get the alert, one of my alerts goes off, you know, the same Sunday, or maybe not till like Monday or Tuesday. I didn't get an alert um, to trade this week until like uh, Tuesday, I think. And that was, that was the first time that like one of my trend lines got crossed and I said, okay, it's time to trade. So all Monday, didn't even really look at the charts. Um, details on your filming setup. Ah, oh, thank you so much. So I use a Sony A6000 for my camera. And in order to turn my camera into a webcam for my laptop, I have this attachment cord and it's called a cam link. Got it on Amazon. I got these two cool little studio lights. Um, it's just two, two little studio lights that go on either side of my face. And then behind me is two sunset lamps and you can change the color of those. But I think the, the way that you really have a setup that's this nice quality is one, having a nice camera, and then two, being able to create this cool effect in the background. Thank you, Elez. Um, is to be able to, one, you gotta separate yourself from the background. So that wall is kinda like, kinda far. So being able to have enough distance from the background to put the color on it and um, create like this bokeh blurred effect, having the two lights on your face um, instead of like this ring light in front of you. So that's, that's my setup. 
All right, guys, it is 9.30, so I'm hopping off. Thank you guys for hanging out tonight. This is fun. I'm, I'm bummed that I wasn't able to do my review on Forex Tester, but stay tuned. It will be coming soon. I just either have to do like um, this Parallels app on my computer to be able to do Windows stuff on here, but um, I got to figure out how I can get Forex Tester on here with my Mac. So once I figure that out, we'll be doing a live stream full review. We'll kind of walk through the entire setup process, um, how I'm going to be utilizing Forex Tester. Now it's funny, it's called Forex Tester, yes, but you are able to back test the futures market on it. So that's what's um, beneficial to me. That's what makes sense for me. So, all right, guys, I'm hopping off. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. This was fun. This is fun. Energy was great. Um, I'm hopping off and I will see you guys on another time. Adios, my friends.